hi, this is Bebe Song of Essinova. In the 1990s, plant biologists and vi virologists observed RNA interference, a phenomenon by which small non-coding RNAs would interfere with the expression of a specific gene in transgenic plants. Upon that finding, scientists worldwide set out on a search for the same phenomenon in different organisms. In 2006, American biologists Andrew Fire and Craig Mello shared a Nobel Prize for discovering a potent gene silencing effect after injecting double-stranded RNA into C. elegans, a worm. That work had begun in 1998, and it was the first identification of a causative agent for such phenomenon. These scientific findings have fueled a surge in interest in harnessing RNAi for biomedical research and for drug development. Today I'm in Boston at the IBC Drug Discovery and Development Conference, and I'm speaking with Patrick Liu, who's the co-founder and CEO of uh, Sonomics, which is a young SI RNA company at the forefront of this cutting edge, very sexy technology in biopharmaceuticals today. Welcome, Mr. Liu, at, to my interview. Thank you, Pepe. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you're in a very exciting field. It's been touted as the next big thing after antibody therapeutics. And farmers, big farmers, have poured in billions of dollars investing in it, hoping to find their uh, next blockbuster drug. Um, I want to ask you, though, um, I, I think I know your answer to this question, but maybe you'll surprise me. Do you think it's overhyped, underhyped, or hyped just about right? I think this is uh, clearly have a different dynamic. At the early days, like uh, 2002, 2003, a little bit over hyped. But after all those years, uh, the scientists in the field clearly have better understanding what this technology really is, what can do, what cannot do, what is the potential hurdles, but what the other ways you overcome the hurdles to make this technology become reality for either uh, the drug discovery means or potential therapeutics as a novel drug modality. It's not overhyped and it's clearly not underhyped, but uh, it really represents a revolutionary uh, discovery of this new technology after uh, the recombinant protein technology and monoclonal antibody technologies. And uh, I, I believe this is the uh, next big thing. I also want to make sure we are scientists. We have to face the reality and work hard on this. So you believe that we know enough, um, the, the scientific discoveries notwithstanding, you believe that we know enough the fundamental science as applied to medicine to actually develop drugs against it? I kind of agree your statement uh, because the understanding about RNA magnus action is pretty good right now. Uh, it's more than a decade. So from multiple organisms, uh, you know, from the plant to worm, and then right now we even have a human trial ongoing. So the understanding of the magnus action clearly uh, it's much better. I think we are uh, having a good stand on the scientific ground on this new technology. The question is, how it can be used as therapeutics? Okay, so that's, that's the unknown. Um, maybe we can talk a little more specifically what we do know, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll talk about what, what we don't know. So what do we know, and what's special about this, uh, this um, biologics as compared to the, um, the previous platform technologies, uh, such as the antibodies, or to previous generations of, of oligos, and such as antisense. Okay, uh, just for the term RNA interference, uh, you can know this is uh, uh, something related to RNA. RNA is uh, the uh, transition between DNA to protein. We know the central doma of the basic biology. You have a gene coded by DNA, and then you have a functional protein to really uh, action in different uh, biological pathways. In between, you have RNA. So RNA, it's a messenger. It also have a lot of uh, regulatory functions. Uh, currently, we know there are more than just RNAi. There are other mechanisms of action involved in this regulatory process. But RNAi basically can have very, very good sequence-specific activity to knocking down particular gene expression 
to regulate that gene expression in terms of uh, uh, viral genes, mammalian cell genes, and potentially for human uh, gene regulation. So that's why we are putting that into a clinical testing uh, background. So what would be the promise um, if we can manage to okay. realize this potential? Compared to the current drug, uh, either small molecule drug or monoclonal antibody drugs, they all uh, antagonist drugs. Basically, they block the function of those uh, disease-causing proteins. However, we need another modality uh, of the inhibitor, such as RAI, can knocking down the production of those proteins. So there are many evidence to show knocking down the production of the uh, disease-causing protein working with uh, the block the function of those proteins going to be much more effective. Okay. Um, what are the problems or challenges in actually realizing that potential? Although RNAi can be worked very specifically, uh, because we are dealing with RNA, RNA also uh, not very stable in mm. the uh, biological environment uh, due to the RNA's activity. So uh, one challenge for uh, realizing this RNA therapeutics uh, potential is that the delivery. Uh, that means you need to deliver this double-strand RNA into the cell, into the cytoplasma. That's where the biological functions start. The mechanism action uh, involving several proteins like uh, dicers, uh, chopping down the double-strand RNA into small pieces, and the one strand of those small pieces going to be uh, incorporated with the uh, uh, complex called the risk complex, RNA-induced silencing complex. So, uh, and then can really move into the targeted sequence, uh, get the down regulation of those targeted sequences working. So it's a, a quite complicated process. You need to deliver RNA into the cell. Clearly, delivery seems to be the biggest problem for everybody in this uh, field, and that's why yesterday a big chunk of the conference was on discovery, I mean on delivery. Um, so I heard different delivery mechanisms, GURPS and liposome, and your company specializes in nanoparticles. Right. I assume that these different uh, delivery methods probably work better for different targets. Perhaps you can compare, say, nanoparticles uh, to the other ones. What, what is it? Pros and cons? I think you already grabs the key issues. There's no universal delivery system can be useful for every type of the disease application. There's nothing like that. However, for different uh, therapeutic application, uh, I'll give you an example. If you deliver SIRA to the liver, you may need a certain type of delivery system. Delivery SIRA systemically for uh, metastasis tumor treatment, uh, you may need to have more sophisticated delivery system. If you want to deliver SRA into the brain, you may need to overcome the issue of a blood-brain barrier. However, on the other hand, there is something you can use uh, very straightforward. For example, skin. You don't really need to have very sophisticated system, but some kind of uh, improvement may allow you to have very effective therapeutic uh, application. And the delivery into the lung, you can have aerosolation. Does not need to be uh, uh, have the system allowed you to do the, the systemic delivery? Still works very well.